Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This book was published in 1937 AD. Till date, it has sold more than 100 million copies. Let's look at the title of the book, Think and Grow Rich. It isn't saying work hard and get rich or grind and get rich because thinking is the greatest capacity we humans have been endowed with. Have you ever seen people around you who are successful from the standpoint of society and who are not? Well, what's the difference? It's not that they work really hard and other. Well, there is not much difference about it. Moreover, astonishingly, people in the lower level seem to work much much harder every day than people who are in top. But the main thing that makes difference is successful people think that they think about a way to increase their financial status position and a way to improve their performance. Whereas average people just spend their time by worrying and thinking about things that don't matter and blaming others for everything that is wrong with your life. Here Napoleon Hill is talking about we should use our thinking capacity, we should focus our thinking for getting what we want instead of what we don't want, whether it is health, wealth, fame or relationship. There are 13 principles of success that are enlisted in this book. But before immersing in those principles, you got to have definite purpose because if you don't, then you will just drift around here and there from one thing to another like a leaf falling from tree. You got to know what you want of this life, what do you want to do with your time and resources. You got to define what success means for you, whether it is earning a million dollar, becoming a world class athlete, scientist, writer or anything that you can think about. Just decide what you really want from this life. Now let's look at some of those principles. The first principle is desire. How bad do you want to have what you want? Author talks about having burning desire or obsession to have what one wants. The kind of desire that is ready to leave behind everything. The desire that is ready to sacrifice unnecessary things for that definite purpose. There is a story in the book. An emperor with his huge fleet of ships goes on to conquer another country but he soon finds out his soldiers are usually outnumbered by the enemies. So he orders all his soldiers to get out of the ship and burn them. Then he tells, our ships are burned. We have no way to retreat. We have to either die or win this battle. His soldiers fight with the burning desire to win and live. Thus the emperor wins the battle. The second principle is fate. Do you believe in your goal? Because if you don't, you will not be able to make it happen. You will not want to make sacrifice or any effort. So you got to have the faith in your goal. People say faith can move the highest mountain. Well, in reality, it might not actually move the mountain, but it will certainly give the willpower and courage to start keeping away that mountain. Faith keeps us going when there is nothing to start with. When we are deep down in the deepest valley of life, Hill says, Whatever a mind can conceive and believe, it can achieve it. He recommends use of autosuggestion, affirmation and visualization to develop and strengthen one's faith. The third principle is autosuggestion. You need to constantly suggest yourself that you will achieve your goal and see yourself already achieving your goal and repeat your affirmation. We can program our subconscious mind to achieve what we want through autosuggestion and affirmation. The fourth principle is specialized knowledge. With specialized knowledge, pilot control the plane, surgeon can do surgery, and inner design the building. Similarly, with specialized knowledge, you can deliver the required service efficiently and effectively. For example, actor don't have to do everything, he just need to specialize in acting. Chef don't have to know about farming, driving, he just need to specialize in cooking. And more specialized you are, more you are paid. That's why world class athletes, speakers and scientists are paid more because they know certain things more efficiently and perfectly. Fifth principle is imagination. With the help of imagination, I can see myself earning amount of money I want to earn. With the imagination, I can see myself living the life I want to live. With the imagination, I can experiment and simulate the 
ideas I want to apply as the mind can differentiate between reality and imagination I can reinforce and live my vision and goal through the help of imagination imagination let's want to see the thing that don't already exist and move towards it right brothers were able to see the flying machine long before they created it through their imagination through the aid of imagination many inventions and discoveries are possible sixth principle is organized planning so you want to build a nice wonderful table but first of all you got to have a plan or design of that table about how to cut the wood and where to join those pieces then only you will be able to create the wonderful table you imagine an organized plan is required to achieve the desired result planning helps to provide direction for your action and effort with our plan you will just move here and there but don't get anywhere plan is like a map that helps you to get where you want to go the seventh principle is decision how many times you procrastinate because you can't decide whether to join the gym or not whether to start that thing or not the ability to make quick mindful decision lead to more action and effectiveness every step of our life is filled with yes or no we have to decide whether to do the thing or not each moments of life and small small decision we make every day is very very important we are here because of decision we made five years ago two years ago two weeks ago those tiny tiny decision brought us right here the eighth principle is persistence author says failure can cope with persistence persistence action leads to result one is hoping for it's true nothing worthwhile in life comes easy it needs struggle you have to overcome hardships and challenges for most people this is the point where they put a break in their action and stop doing what they are doing this is where the habit of finishing what one starts comes into place with persistence, practice and effort, we can make things happen no matter how tough it is. The ninth principle is power of the mastermind. When we have some kind of illness, we go to doctor. When our appliances break, we go to technician. Similarly, when we have problem that we can't solve ourselves, we shouldn't hesitate to take the advice of expert. You see, two brain is better than one. It's not possible to learn about everything or getting specialized in every field or experiencing mistakes which can be easily avoided. This is where the use of mastermind groups comes into play. This group can provide us with valuable ideas and information needed and can even help us to get motivated and accountable. The tenth principle is the mystery of sex transmutation this is a controversial chapter different people understand or perceive in different ways but this sentence in the book resonated to me much the salesman who know how to take his mind off the subject of sex and direct it in sales effort with as much enthusiasm and determination as he will apply to its original purpose has acquired the art of sex transmutation whether he knows it or not the 11th principle is the subconscious mind. Author explains about how subconscious mind can connect you to the infinite intelligence. Many times we do things unconsciously without even knowing it. The main cause is our brain is continuously working. If we can somehow influence our brain, our subconscious mind, then we can make breakthrough. The 12th principle is the brain. Brain is no doubt the greatest instrument that has allowed human beings to change the world. The 13th principle is the sixth sense. This chapter is little controversial. The author talks about how he was able to communicate with great people like Aristotle, Darwin, Emerson, Lincoln, and so on. Now let's look at how you can apply the principles mentioned in the book. So you want to run a full marathon but you don't have the experience of running. First of all, you need to have desire, a strong desire to run full marathon. Then you got to believe it that you can make it happen. That's where faith comes into play. In order to strengthen your faith, you can use auto solution. You have to describe yourself that when you want to achieve your goal, what goods it brings to your life and what are you going to give in return. Like by August 1st of 20 something, I am running full marathon. I have become more healthy, slim, strong and for that I have ran every single day. Then you can make your effort more effective 
through the use of specialized knowledge you gather like tips and tricks of running how to avoid injury how to run fast and what types of shoes to use as we all know our mind can differentiate the difference between reality and imagination you can use the power of imagination to reinforce your goal and running ritual you can imagine twice a day of already achieving your goal feel the happiness and joy of achieving and see the effort you put in the training just inside your brain as per organized planning you can make a list of actionable steps to achieve your goal what time is suitable for you to run how much will you run in beginning what kind of food are you going to eat and how are you going to increase the distance and speed every day you have to decide either to run or not one will get you towards your goal other will throw you away so you got to make right choice about the food rest and training and at last running every day isn't an easy task especially in the beginning if it was then everybody would be doing it it's hard that's why most people stop running after a couple of days or week if you really want to achieve your goal then you got to be persistent you got to take the challenge and obstacle as the point to grow